Hi, I'm Joe Stowe. Today's project is to replace the pull start rope on a Coleman generator. This is a PowerMate 2500 generator and as you can see here the recoil starter rope broke. So the project today is to replace it. In this case it's a generator but this would work just fine if you have a regular lawnmower with a pull start. Okay, tools needed will be a screwdriver. This one I needed a Phillips. I needed just a small ratchet. I'm using a quarter inch ratchet today, an old craftsman. Uh, an eight millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket, and in my case of this particular generator, a three eighths inch uh, socket as well. And then you'll just need a cup that you can put your hardware in so you don't lose it. Okay, so now to get started, your lawnmower or generator, whatever it is that you're replacing the recoil start on, it, you need to remove the top cover. This one was held on with two Phillips head screws. I took the screws off and put them into my cup so I don't lose them. All right, let's put that aside for safekeeping. And then the next thing I needed to do was, because as soon as I opened that up, I found it, ah, darn. This recoil is held on with rivets. A little more difficult. Um, but it's totally doable. So I need to get the gas tank out of the way and I'm gonna to have to take off some more bolts as well. So there were, uh, in this case, there were three eight millimeter bolts holding on the gas tank. Now in this case, all I have to do is I can take it and just tilt it back and make sure it's not full of gas. This is pretty much almost empty. You don't wanna pull off the fuel line or the vent line off of this. So, uh, so all you gotta do is just get it out of the way. All right, now what we need to do is get Here's the recoil that I need to replace the rope on. Um, and as you can see, the rivets, there's uh, four of them on holding this on. So what I need to do now is because it's riveted to the engine shroud here, I need to take this entire shroud off. And that has uh, uh, two bolts, 10 millimeter. In my, uh, they're normally 10 millimeter bolts, bolts on a lawnmower. In my case, uh, they're three eighths. There's three eighth bolts two of them in the back, two of them in the front, and an eight millimeter holding the uh, oil dipstick on as well. All right, so I'm gonna start with the dipstick because I already got my eight millimeter attached. Then we'll get that off. All right, and then uh, don't pull the dipstick out, just kind of see if you can get it. Well, if this one has to pull out, and I'm just gonna tilt it and turn it uh, so it's facing away. This one had a pin going down, a, an alignment pin going down into the shroud. So I had to pull it out. Uh, what you want to try to do is if you don't have to break the seal on that O-ring on the bottom of this, then don't. But if you do, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. And then I need to put my 3 8 inch on and we'll get these back bolts off. Again, if you have quarter inch drive tools, they work great uh, for this kind of stuff because they're much smaller and 3 8 tends to be large and get in the way of things. So then when you have your 10 millimeter bolts, or in my case, 3 8 inch bolts off, there's four of them. And let's see if we can just lift this shroud off without anything else in the way. Oh, yeah, I just need to bend that out. In this case, I just have a little tab here. It's in the way. I'm just, it's, I'm just going to bend it out of the way. Boom. And we lift this off. Okay, so there it is. Now we can see the top of the engine looks good. Actually, has good compression too as well. There's nothing, uh, no damaged fins, cooling fins on it or anything. So that's good. Now here's the bottom of the recoil. This is what it looks like. Here's the bottom of the rivets. And here's the, here's the rest of the, of the rope that was left in here. So I'm going to check to make sure these paws work. And just by spinning this plastic piece here, and you can see that they came out, they stick out there. And then I spin the plastic piece again and the other way, and then they retract. And what happens there is these paws, so they have to be in there. So if they're damaged, this is the perfect time to, to replace them. Uh, if, if one is missing. If you find one that's laying down inside the cup here, then uh, you need to replace the paws, and they're really cheap. So you'll be, it's like less than $5, I think, for two of them at your uh, mower shop. 
So what happens is when you pull the starter rope, these pawls engage. They come out like that. Okay, see them sticking out, the white pieces. And what they do is they go into these indents in this cup that's bolted to the top of the engine. As they go, they grab the indents here, that spins the engine, which will then get the engine to start. So then when it hits the end of the spring, it's gonna recoil. The, uh, this will spin back. Your uh, pawls retract back into, into the uh, plastic uh, housing here. And then as your rope is recoiling, so now it's no longer grabbing the engine. The engine is free to spin as it's running. So it's a, it's a real simple system. It's great. It works all the time until your rope breaks. So it's not a big deal. Now one of the things you're going to want to do uh, before uh, you get too involved is make sure that your new rope is the right length. So I'm using my old one, my old rope handle as a starting point. And so I'm just going to measure the two ropes out side by side. and get the same length. Now, the old one broke, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give a little bit longer and account for some room for a knot, um, and that should be the right length then. So it's, you know, it just needs to be approximate. Okay, and then uh, just cut off the excess. Because we have all these frayed ends here, and that's gonna, we have to fish it through. I'm just gonna melt them a little bit. That'll make it, now it's nice and melted. That'll make it easier to uh, push through. Okay, so now what we have to do is make sure we have the right amount of turns on our coil so that we can uh, just feed the rope in and then it's gonna be right. So what I wanna do is my, uh, where the rope comes in is right here. So I'm just gonna lay the rope in here. And this is approximate. So we got one there, one rotation. There's two rotations. There's three. So it looks like about four and a half. So and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add one more. So I'll just go like five or about five, five and a half turns. So now as I, I need to wind up my spring and I'm gonna start with the whole where the rope comes through, which is right here where my pliers are pointing, and that's lined up with the hole on the outside shroud. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wind it uh, counterclockwise, okay? So that way we're tightening up the spring. One, two, three, four, and there's five. So I thought I could get five and a half, but it's not gonna work. Six I think is gonna to be too much in that um, I might be taking a chance on breaking the spring. There might be too much tension on it. So I'm just gonna go with five and we'll see how it works. And if it doesn't, we can adjust. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, needle nose vice grips and I'm just gonna stick it on one of the uh, fins here. So that way, it'll hold by itself. I don't have to hold on to it. Then we take our rope. Now we gotta feed it through. Now what I'm doing here is I fished a piece of safety wire through. I'm just attaching it to the rope on the outside here. because it's being, it's being a little problematic to get through. So we'll see if this will work. There it is, you can see it coming through. Okay, so I got my safety wire, but I can still see enough of the rope sticking through there. I can just grab my pliers. And there we have it. Okay. 
So now all you need is a little granny knot on the end of this to make it work. You don't need a fancy knot. Just make sure it's big enough. I'll just make mine double the size. There we go. And there you go. So you can see there the knot is in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this and I'm going to release my pliers and we'll, we're going to let it spin and we'll see if, it, uh, if it's going to take up all of my rope. And it did. So there we have, we have the rope on the outside, we have our coil, and if I pull my rope, Seems to be working. Okay, I think we're back in business. Okay, so now it's just a matter of getting everything put back together. And that uh, shouldn't take long. Let me just get it all back here. Alright, we'll put our bolts in. These are the big uh, 3 8 inch bolts. Next we'll be using our 8 millimeter. Get that ready to go. And we're going to simply just slide our... Uh, before we do that even, let's get our dipstick lined up. All right, that looks good. Okay, we get our eight millimeter bolts in. We have to get the dipstick one in first. Let's do that. Tight is good, it doesn't have to be too tight. And we simply need to put our shroud back on here. Make sure your handle is coming out. This just had two big long screws on it. And there we have it. Job's done. Let's go take a test and make sure it works. project completed here at my garage so if you like this video hit the like button don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I've got lots more handy tips coming down the line okay I'll see you on the next one